now, back to G.I. Joe. Yo, Joes, it's time for another 3D Joes Collecting the Art of G.I. Joe Virtual Read-Through. And today, I'm going to be taking a look at Volume 4, which collects the artwork of G.I. Joe from 1988 to 1989. But just wanted to give you a heads up again about this awesome slipcase. This beautiful slipcase that holds all of your volumes of the art of G.I. Joe. So if you got the soft cover AccuFoil versions like I have here, they don't really sit on a shelf. I guess you could line them up side by side, but ideally you can now have them all stored in this beautiful slipcase available on 3D Joe's Com. So that's really cool. Lots of great memories of opening boxes with fun vehicles like the Vamp and the Hal and the Ram and the <laughs> Mobat. I didn't have some of those, but uh, great memories open boxes, opening boxes with G.I. Joe stuff in them. So it's, uh, it's kind of fitting that these beautiful books of G.I. Joe art are now held in a box. Available on 3djoes.com. Like the other volumes, this one is compiled by Carson Metaxas, who is one of the finest G.I. Joe fans out there. Carson, thanks so much for all of your effort put into these beautiful art volumes. And the cover, AccuFoil once again, featuring the Crusader, since the Defiant was released previous year. And then um, within these years... The shuttle from the Defiant was reissued, but with a different deco, with the yellow windshield, black parts, and the little mini shuttle in the back. Open it up, and we get a forward by Kirk Bazigian again, who wrote a forward for the other ones, and we also get an intro by Carson featuring... Some really nice artwork here. That's the Rolling Thunder with the giant missile silos. And then you've got Road Pig, the Scholar Dreadnought, and Zartan's general there, Voltar. Some more artwork. And once again, the card art, uh, the scans of the figures uh, are side by side instead of taking up an entire page. And we start off with the 1988 carded figures. And I remember having this guy as a kid, the Astro Viper. So Cobra made its leap into space with the Astro Viper. And another one of my favorites, when I was a kid, Blizzard. I couldn't turn down the Snow Joes and this guy was just so awesome. He came with skis, but they were bigger, thicker, and snow job skis, tons of other accessories too. And then, if you like ninjas, how about samurai? It's Budo, the G.I. Joe samurai warrior. Flip the page over. And we take a look at the new flamethrower for the Joes, Charbroil, who I didn't really like his outfit as much as Blowtorch. And then there's Hardball. We start getting into the Sporty Joes. And we've got our baseball player, the multi-shot Gren Grenadier, Grenader, Grenadier. And this is another cool one. Hit and run. So um, myself, I guess to some extent, and a lot of Joe fans, uh, lost some interest when the Sunbow cartoon run had ended. But guys like Hit and Run just take me right back to those first couple years of G.I. Joe. He looks perfect right alongside guys like Stalker, Footloose, those types of guys. Really grounded in military and some awesome weapons, accessories too. This big duffel bag that had a giant hook with string in it. Cobra got another uh, underwater trooper with the Hydro Viper who had this really freaky hand with webbed fingers. So it was one of the first times that they decided to change the standard mold and instead of two gripping hands 
giving a guy a freaky webbed hand. Destro got his own army in 88 with the Iron Grenadiers. So there's the army builder, Iron, Gren Iron Grenadier Trooper. And Lightfoot, uh, G.I. Joe that I really just didn't connect with for some reason. I never had him back in the day. And I don't have them right now. And I've seen them at a ton of conventions. The price has been really cheap, but I just, I just have no interest in Lightfoot for some reason. I just, I don't know. He kind of looks like um, Airtight. So I really love Airtight. I don't know if I don't want a guy who kind of looks like Airtight with a really weird helmet. Almost looks like he should be a Marvel character, superhero, or villain. But I just didn't get Lightfoot. Uh, Muskrat, though. That's another cool Joe. Swamp Joe. Great Joe to have alongside guys like Rakondo and other, you know, like uh, hot weather or damp surroundings. Repeater, another cool classic looking Joe in the vein of Gung Ho and Roadblock. He is the steady cam machine gun machine gunner so he's got himself a giant gun a la drake and vasquez and aliens and then there's road pig who in he never uh, made it to the sunbow cartoon but in the larry hammer comics hilarious he is brilliant you wouldn't know it by looking at that art and the figure but he is absolutely brilliant. I think he's a big fan of Shakespeare. Uh, his uh, vocabulary, vocabulary is totally uh, not fitting of the look that he has, but a really fun, quirky character. And you got Shockwave, who looks like he'd be right at home alongside the uh, Central Organization of Police Specialists. Cops. He is the SWAT specialist. And then... There is Spearhead and Max, so you always got to have a good soldier and animal tandem. And it comes with a bobcat, so I don't know how much you can train a bobcat, especially for military missions, but that was one of the cool later animal tandems. And then Storm Shadow has a change of heart and becomes a G.I. Joe. And that was really confusing to me when i first saw this guy on the on the pegs because there's not really anything on the front that gives away that he's a joe now but when you read his file card you find out he has switched sides and that was the debut of the arashikage tattoo on a figure so it was cool to see a lot of influence from the comics happening with the figures and since Cobra are villains, they're evil, they're terrorists, they don't care about the environment. And so the Toxo Viper, Cobra hostile environment trooper. I have a feeling that they weren't really cleaning up the environment, though. They were making more of a mess and it was Airtight who was cleaning it up. But very cool that Airtight had a counterpart now in Cobra. And then... To command Destro's forces, so he can delegate a little bit. Uh, Voltar, Destro's general, his right-hand man. So after years of being Cobra Commander's right-hand man, it's cool that Destro now had his own right-hand man. And he includes a vulture, too. So another soldier-animal tandem. That's weird. I always thought it was weird that it's considered Battle Force 2000. I always thought the Iron Grenadiers were so much cooler than Battle Force 2000. And then there are some Night Force offerings, which I, I totally skipped these uh, in my youth. I just thought they were lazy repaints. Cool if you miss the original version, but if I had the uh, original version of the figure, I wasn't going to spend the money on a repaint. It's different in He-Man when they remold certain parts, but they give you a brand new character. But to actually call these guys by the same name, it's Sneak Peek, it's Falcon. I guess I just got too used to figures getting a new body when they were reissued, like a new Snake Eyes figure, a new Rock and Roll figure. 
Um, to call this guy Falcon and have him look exactly like the original Falcon. Almost exactly. Uh, sneak peek, same body, just a recolor. Um, I didn't really like that. I skipped most of these guys. Same goes for Tiger Force. Here's the 1988 Tiger Force figures. And I passed on all of these. And next up we have uh, a medley of box art. We've got the Cobra Adder and the Battle Barge, the Imp, the Stiletto, the RVP, which is the remote pilot vehicle. I guess we'll get a, a better look at this as we flip through the pages. But on this page, we've got the Cobra Adder, Battle Barge. There's the Cobra Bug. This is one that I've been trying to find for a while now, but uh, the price just hasn't been right. Its uh, value has really shot up, so it's a really cool looking underwater vehicle. It's got detachable pods, sleds, sea sleds. There's the pod. It'd be a cool one to have, but it's a little pricey. And then we've got the Imp. I actually do have this one picked it up just a couple years ago and it's cool it's like a kind of a mini hiss tank or a combo of the mms and hiss tank it's got some serious firepower and there's a stiletto which actually includes a star viper so something to give the joes in space a headache And there's the Desert Fox six wheel drive. And this guy's name is Skidmark. And down here we've got one of the cooler later tanks, the Mean Dog, which can actually separate into three pieces. And that is Wild Card, who doesn't look all that formal. In his dress, he's got a unbuttoned shirt with the sleeves torn off. Next up, yes, beautiful, the Phantom X-19 Stealth Fighter, piloted by, um, what's his name again? It's on the tip of my tongue, but I love this ship. And uh, the box is ginormous. I was lucky enough to pick one up a few years ago that included a box. And I don't really care much about the boxes usually, but it was included, so I said, sure, why not? And I'm so glad I did, because it is just a giant, beautiful display piece. And they really captured it wonderfully here. What, what was his name again? Eh, I'm sure it'll come to me. The, uh, <laughs> the RVP remote piloted vehicle. I remember having this one as a kid. And I had uh, a couple of these little cheaper mid-sized vehicles or small-sized vehicles. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's there. It's, it's got a missile on it. It, it really wasn't all that interesting. Um, kind of almost like a, uh, a HAL laser with treads and a, a rocket instead of a laser. And there's the Swamp Masher. Really weird looking vehicle. And the, these are the uh, when the color schemes start to go a little funky. So we've got a brighter green than the typical OD green. Purple wheels, and there's wheels everywhere. Everywhere on this thing. But uh, an interesting vehicle for good old muskrat as it goes through the swamp. And next we've got the Rolling Thunder. So every year they try to have one big giant major release like the headquarters or the flag. And it was the Rolling Thunder for that year. Over three feet long with giant missile silos. And it held tons of Joes. Little roller, Optimus Prime roller looking mini tank there. And the Skystorm, a combination of a jet 
and a helicopter. I, I wonder how they got away with calling it an X-Wing chopper. It's interesting. X-Wing chopper. Kind of a odd looking chopper and starting to really transition into the more sci-fi looking stuff. And here's a more traditional looking military vehicle, the Warthog with Sergeant Slaughter. 10 hut maggot. So the Sarge can now carry a bunch of maggots in the back, a couple maggots on the front, and go and kick Cobra's tail. Definite improvement over the Triple T. Very cool, very fitting of the Sarge. Amphibious too, so you could take it through the water. And then we've got the Night Blaster. Some some Night Force offerings. So that's a uh, recolor of, interestingly enough, the Maggot. Yeah, that can't be a coincidence, putting the Maggot right under the guy who calls everybody a Maggot. And also a recolor of the Triple T, Sarge's uh, Triple T tank, the Night Raider. Looks a little bit better in black, I gotta say. Not bad. Couple more Night Force. The Night Shade. Very cool black recolor of the shark. The Night Storm. And look at the size of this thing. The what was this thing called? The Night Striker. Recolor of the G.I. Joe Killer Whale. And that is much more, aside from the red pieces, the black motif really would help it with night missions. I love this tank. It's Destro's Demon, which stands for Dual Elevating Multi Ordnance Neutralizer. That works for me. Really cool tank. Comes with a driver too. And kind of a transformer. It could, um, I guess you can't see it from the, oh yeah, you can. It could rise up. So these treads would join together and give it a little bit of elevation. And Destro's despoiler could actually mount on the top right there. So you could combine it into one super tank. And then there's the AGP, the anti-gravity pod. Destro's air fighter, and there's Destro with the despoiler. And I always loved when they would release figures like this with their own personalized little vehicle like Serpentor in the air chariot, um, Zartan and his chameleon. So that really felt old school, even though, I mean, G.I. Joe, a real American hero, had only been around for less than 10 years at that point, but that felt old school to me, very fitting. And we've got more Tiger Force, the Tiger Cat. So if you didn't have any snow in your part of the world, then you got the Tiger Cat. You can take it through the jungle. The Tiger Fly, that's a pretty cool looking repaint of the uh, Dragonfly. That's not bad. Another thing that I thought was weird about Tiger Force, it really turned me off, was who's this guy, Frostbite? But he's got a red beard, orange, brown, red beard, whatever, not black like the original. So you got to stay consistent with a guy's hair color and beard color. And then with the dragonfly, you would think it would be Wild Bill, but it's Ricondo. So again, it felt to me, and I was such a huge, passionate Joe fan, little things like this felt to me like, whoever's running this brand doesn't know the property as well as I do. And I was thinking, I'm just a kid. Like, how do I know this stuff better than they do? And it made me lose a little bit of, well, a lot of interest in the line when that happened. Because the earlier years, it just seemed like they cared so much. Tiger paw, it's a recolor of the ferret and the tiger shark. Recolor of the 
Cobra water moccasin. So interesting that we were getting some Cobra vehicles recolored and the Joes were using them. Speaking of which the Cobra Rattler got a redeco as the Tiger Rat. And once again, who's the pilot? Sky Striker. It make any sense to me. There's already a G.I. Joe Sky Striker. It's not like it's an obscure forgotten vehicle. It's the G.I. Joe Sky Striker. So I didn't like them naming a guy Sky Striker. To me, that seemed like, hmm, trademark's about to expire. They need to name some toy Sky Striker to not lose it. And that kind of takes the fun out of it for me. See what I'm talking about? This guy just... Lightfoot, he just... So weird to me, the helmet. Just... Uh, don't like it. Um, there's hardball on some of these action pack mini weapons and the Cobras got a couple of action packs as well. These are cool that you can actually take them off, have them use like a little console or a gun, but you can also have the Joe wear them on their backs. Some more mini vehicles, the vehicle pack, GI Joe scuba pack. These look really, they look really silly to me. It's just way too, way too tiny. It's like a 12 inch GI Joe riding a real American hero vehicle. And this tiny little mini helicopter. It's almost like something in a mask. And then we've got some GI Joe magazine covers. And this art is beautiful too. It's just about on the same level as the card art from the figures. We're looking at the spring and fall covers. There's Storm Shadow. And I love how that Arashikage tattoo is just peeking out from his shirt. Now this is a nice one. Spring of 88 poster, Battle in Space. And there's a shuttle. I don't know if that's part of the Defiant or if that's the Crusader, but a battle. Earth could not contain the battle between Giecho and Cobra, so they had to move it off into space. And then, is this the end of Sergeant Slaughter? Operation Deep Six. What does this note say? Greetings. As you can see, Slaughter is mine. Surrender all blueprints of the Defiant Space Launch Complex or you'll see a real slaughter. You have 24 hours. Love, Cobra. <laughs> That's really cool. And there's the Sarge all chained up. Ah, come on. I don't believe that for a second. In two seconds, Sarge is snapping all those chains off. And we spin it around this way. We've got some mural puzzles. There's Lieutenant Falcon and Voltar. Medley of artwork down here. Crocmaster. And some young adult books from Valentine. The Siege of Serpentor. That looks like Gung Ho without his hat. Divide and Conquer with the <laughs> Raptor guy, Raptor. Fool's Gold with the uh, Space Battle. I'd love to get my hands on some of these. I'm interested to see what these stories are like. Invisibility Island with the Hydrofoil and some Cobra Mambas flying around. Jungle Raid and Sultan's Secret. Looks like Mindbender just got his monocle knocked out by Hama himself. Or is that Tunnel Rat? They look very similar. Next page is the Mighty Tough Hand Cleanser in G.I. Joe sunglasses. They were making everything. So you got a hand cleanser, Joe sunglasses. That's kind of a cool idea to do some military gear. Would have loved to see some Joe uh, gloves, boots, even clothing. Not just t-shirts, but like fatigues, pants. 
uh, cargo pants. Bathroom gift set from Avon. Look at all that stuff. I wonder if we're going to be seeing socks and bed sheets soon. On to a new year. It is 1989. And there's the Alley Viper. Popular Cobra character. And another Iron Grenadier, the Annihilator. I like this guy, Backblast. Another kind of traditional looking Joe. They're starting to get a lot of weapons and accessories at this point. But kind of like Zap, Bazooka guy. Another space figure to fill up your Defiant or Crusader. Countdown. And Battle Force 2000 gets another member with DJ. Deep Six gets a new figure. I love it when the old Joes get a new body. Huge improvement over the original. I don't know. It's, the first one was so not very usable, so limited in articulation. I guess anything can be considered an improvement. It's just funny that they would go from that ancient diving suit to something that looks maybe even more ancient. But at least he's got a lot more posability. And then there's Downtown, who I thought should have just been Short Fuse. It should have been Short Fuse as a new body. Same hair color. Mortar Soldier. Mortar Man. Curious as to why they didn't just call him Short Fuse. Maybe they lost the uh, trademark on the name. But Short Fuse was one of my favorite original Joes, so I was kind of treated that as the new Short Fuse. We've got the Frag Viper. Another uh, Dreadnought. The Poacher. He's so dastardly. His Naga Hide. And he comes with a boar. And then there is the Heat Viper. Another acronym. And the Night Viper. To give low light a run for his money in the dark. We've got Recoil, who's got some digital camo. We hadn't seen much digital camo in G.I. Joe at this point. But, uh... That's, that was the new style of camo. And rock and roll. Speaking of original Joes getting a new issue. Awesome. Love the guns on them. Well, these guns and these guns. Great figure. Kind of kind of weird machine guns, but it's cool that the ammo belts feed into the backpack. The black gloves. Just a great simple outfit. Great figure. Scoop. Newsman. Information specialist. And Snake Eyes gets his third figure. Popular character. I just had to keep cranking them out. And at least this one still retained the same color scheme. Or whatever you want to call it. Black and silver, basically. Great weapons and accessories, too. And another fantastic update remake, Stalker, Arctic Stalker. Loved this one. And did a Toys Gone Wild on him a while back. Really cool to take him out to an actual pond in the, uh, in the winter. Amazing figure. Just, I mean, you look at most of these guys and this is what they come with. And Stalker comes with a kayak, which is bigger than him, longer than him. Plus, you'd think that would be enough, but then all of this stuff. So, the original Stalker only came with the one machine gun. They certainly made up for it by including all this stuff with the second version of Stalker. And then this guy looks like another space guy. I don't know if he's actually space-worthy, but it's an Iron Grenadier. The target. Atmospheric, rapid, global, something like that. And Night Force 89. We're releasing some two packs at this point. A little bit of an upgrade for Charbroil. 
nice too. Night Force was kind of like uh, Tiger Force for me. It was the same guy with a different paint job and I passed on all of them, but I do have to admit that some of them look better in their Night Force color scheme than their original one. More repaints. This is when the line was losing steam for me when just repaint after repaint would come out. Python Patrol, got Copperhead, Crimson Guard, he's not really Crimson anymore. Python Trooper, yeah, at this point, I'm, when I'm going to Toys R Us, I'm seeing these and going, what, what is going on? Every single year there had been new characters with new outfits and new weapons, accessories, and even the old characters were getting new bodies, new weapons, accessories. And then I'm seeing all this stuff and I'm like, I've seen all this before in a different color. And as far as Marauder, Slaughter's Marauders go, I like the original versions better. So it was an easy pass for me. And the 1989 vehicles and playsets overview, starting with the Arctic Blast. Uh, not really my cup of tea, this vehicle, but this figure is Windchill. And I actually picked him up at a local toy show recently. So just the figure, but love having him part of my Arctic Forces. And the Fang 2! New version of Cobra's mini helicopter. Lots of rockets, missiles on it. That's a fun little vehicle. And Cobra got another big aircraft with the Cobra Condor Z25. Really wild looking jet that detaches so that it becomes two fighters. And uh, again, I, I didn't get one back then. I still don't have one today, but I do appreciate a new original mold. I appreciate that it's not just a Python, Patrol, or Slaughters, Marauders, or Tiger Force, or Night Force. And then another new mold of an old tank, the Hiss 2. So it's nice that they were still doing some original new stuff. And the Crusader! So if you couldn't afford the Defiant, or you just didn't have anywhere to put it, but you still wanted a space shuttle, blast your Joes off into space, then the Crusader was a retooled, recolored Defiant shuttle. And what was nice about that is it actually included payload. So a recolored version of payload with yellow on him this time to go with the yellow uh, windshield glass of the ship. So that's cool. And you got the mud fighter with dog fight. Reminds me a lot of Wild Bill. And the Raider with Hot Seat, who's, he always looked gray haired to me. It's like a really old Joe, the oldest Joe riding this, this tank. And the Thunderclap. So that was this year's giant vehicle. And it once again split, going with the split motif gimmick. Three vehicles in one that can combine into one super tank with a super cannon. And long range was included. Then we've got a couple of smaller vehicles. The Battlefield Robot Devastator for Cobra. Battlefield Robot Radar Rat for the Joes. Hovercraft and Tri Blaster. Still making Battle Force 2000 vehicles. Still not giving up on it at this point. The Pulverizer. Now that's really weird. Recoil is in it instead of an actual Battle Force 2000 figure. You think they'd put one of the original Battle Force guys or even DJ, one of the newer ones. And then Iron Grenadiers, Darklawn's Evader. 
And interesting that it doesn't have the Battle Force 2000 uh, logo on that. Destro's cousin. And the big tank for the Iron Grenadiers, Destro's Razorback. That looks really cool. Hopefully I can find one of those as well. That's one of the few tanks in my collection I still don't have that I wouldn't mind adding. And the Night Boomer. Even though that's a Sky Striker. So they're still making Sky Strikers, but they're calling a figure Sky Striker instead of this thing. The Sky Striker. The Black Night Boomer and the Night Ray. Recolor of the Hydrofoil. Perfect for uh, night attacks. And those were Toys R Us exclusives. Getting near the end here. Next up is another recolor. It's the Night Scrambler. A recolor of the G.I. Joe APC. And got a Python Patrol Asp. And a Python Patrol Stun. Recolors. Python Conquest. So interesting they didn't give it a new... I guess the Python Patrol, they didn't rename things. Night Force, they did. The Tiger Fish. That's a Tiger Force uh, Devil Fish. The Tiger Sting. Recolor of... Now that's interesting. That's a vamp, vamp Mark II, called Tiger Sting. I guess after the Cobra Stinger, but the Cobra Stinger has a different missile rack on it. So interesting name choices for some of these. The Armadillo, Slaughter's Marauders. It's sort of a reworked Armad, well original Armadillo, but it's got extra artillery on it. The Lynx, which looks like a Wolverine, but instead of eight missiles like the Wolverine had, it's got a big cannon on it. And yes, the Wolverine also had 12 missiles. The Equalizer, Sergeant Slaughter's tank. And it's a recolored, reworked uh, mauler with a lot more artillery on the top. So that's that's uh, not bad in my opinion. Taking the old vehicles and adding like a new top to them, better than just a straight repaint. And we're on the last page. Got a picture of the Phantom here. Crayons. G.I. Joe crayon set. <laughs> That's great. And a six piece fun kit. Everything you need is here. Everything you need for fun. And on the final page, it's Battle Ready Toolkit, Wood Stream Corporation. This is what I was talking about earlier. Like combat boots and cargo pants. Tools. G.I. Joe tools. And a fishing kit. Yes! Exactly. Things that you can actually use in your everyday life. And not like a toy version of it. An actual fishing kit that you can uh, you can use to catch fish that's cool and that would never happen today so that is collecting the art of G.I. Joe volume 4 1988 to 1989 by Carson Metaxas of 3D Joe's if you'd like to get your copy of this and the other volumes Check out 3djoes.com and just check the website out too for all of the amazing artwork that they have posted on there. 3D scans of all the GI Joes and a bunch of other stuff for sale there too, like their fantastic medley posters. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this virtual read through. And until next time, yo, Joe!